We're going to go ahead and cut to the jib camera so you can see the process of actually making the intraoral scanning appliance. And remember, I had mentioned that this can be done both intraorally or it can be done on a model. And I certainly suggest that we start on a model only because it's a little bit um, cumbersome to work with this material. The material that we have been recommending to make this scanning appliance is a hydroplastic material and it deforms under um, hot temperature, but it's a very stiff and reliable material to use as a surgical guide. And it's not very easy to work with. So it takes a little bit of practice, and I certainly suggest you practice before you try this on your first patient because it might be a little frustrating. But essentially the material can come in beads, but it can also come in wafers. and. Uh, comes in as sticks as well as you see here. Now, what we do is we prepare the material by inserting the stick in a bowl of hot water as you can see here. The material, once it gets to the appropriate form, um, will turn clear. So you can see that the material itself is no longer opaque, it's actually turned into a clear material that allows us to uh, mold it to the, to the model. Before I start molding the material, let me talk about the parts and pieces that are required to consider a surgical guide using the CEREC guide concept. In order for us to identify the scanning appliance within the Galileos or the Serona software, the implant software, we have to fabricate an appliance that, that holds in a, um, a reference body, is what we call it. And this reference body is actually a scanning appliance that has fiducial markers built into this scanning T-bar, the reference body. This reference body comes as a kit from the Patterson catalog and it has three sizes, small, medium, and large. The objective is to take the largest diameter that fits in the edentulous site for the given patient. In this case, you can see that tooth number 20 is missing right here and this scan body, which is the large size, actually fits quite nicely into that space. It's a snug fit, but that's how we want to fabricate an appliance that will hold this reference body exactly in this position. Now, when you're working in the posterior arch, you, you can often make the mistake of having it face this way. This would be a bit of a challenge to scan the patient with an appliance having the T aspect point buckly, only because we know that the cheek would prohibit us from being able to scan this patient comfortably. So usually when we're working in the posterior zone, we want this T reference body to be facing lingually, as you see here. Now, to make this appliance, we'll be using the thermoplastic or the hydroplastic material to hold this, uh, this reference body. And once that appliance has been fabricated, that's when we'll take the patient and scan the patient in the cone beam unit. So I'll begin that process in just a moment. Last part that I want to show is the block that itself that is used to, um, to mill the surgical guide portion. So we'll discuss how this part fits into the big picture in just a moment. So we'll put this aside for now. Right now, we're going to focus on actually making that scanning appliance. So we're going to remove this reference body, certainly observing its location mesiodistally and its location with relationship to the adjacent teeth of this edentulous site. I'll remove this and put it to the side, and I'll actually pick up the material that's been sitting in this warm water. Usually um, 180 degrees or anything of that nature is appropriate, but you can see the material is quite clear and translucent. I'll play with it in my hands just for a moment, making sure it doesn't get too uh, hard on me too quick. But I'll place it over the occlusal table, generally mold it so that I'm not locking it into the undercuts like this, and then we'll insert the reference body into the edentulous site as close to the tissue surface as possible. I'll adapt the material to the reference body, making sure that it adapts to the contours defined by the reference body, and then I'll just let it sit like this for approximately two minutes. We can certainly take an air water syringe and blow cold air on it uh, or cold water uh, to set the material, but it's fine just to let it set on its own. Now before it reaches its final hardness, we'll certainly remove it off of the model and pump it up and down so that we ensure that the material itself hasn't locked into the undercuts. So I'll continue to play with this material, but essentially once this material has completely set, it itself will be the scanning appliance. So I'm going to take it off the model here. As you can see here, this is the reference body. Confirm that it still fits back onto the model, just like this. And in a matter of seconds, if not a couple minutes, we've actually made a scanning appliance. At this stage, what we'll do is we'll 
try this in the mouth, evaluate to make sure that it's comfortable for Deb to try in, and we'll walk her over to the Galileos machine to obtain a cone beam scan.